Welcome to the chapter 4 of the Oil and Gas Engineering audiobook. In this chapter, we describe the work and the deliverables of the equipment mechanical discipline. The equipment discipline is sometimes called machinery discipline. Its scope is to specify, select, and then follow up technically after the purchase order all the equipment of the plant. It is split in different specialties. Indeed, specialists are required for the different types of plant equipment. In fact, equipment are grouped in four categories. Static equipment, which are pressure vessels and heat exchangers. Rotating equipment, which are pumps, compressors, turbines. Fired equipment, which are furnaces, boilers, flare. And the last category is packages. The four different specialists all start their work from the functional requirements defined by process and shown on the equipment process datasheet. To these requirements must be added information specific to the site environment as well as specifications to ensure the high quality and dependable service of the equipment. This is done by issuing the mechanical datasheet. Compared to the process datasheet shown on the left side, which only contains functional requirements, the mechanical datasheet shown on the right side contains additional design and construction information. One of the most important information is the applicable design and construction code. Oil and gas facilities equipment are indeed almost always specified to comply with an industry code which is the American Petroleum Institute API code, such as for the case of this mechanical datasheet of a turbo compressor it is specified to comply with API 617. There are such codes for all types of equipment. They contain prescriptions for the design, manufacturing, inspection and testing of equipment to ensure a long and uninterrupted service life. The mechanical datasheet also indicates the material of construction. This is specified by the materials and corrosion discipline. We will see how this is determined in the corresponding discipline section. The mechanical datasheet also specifies where the equipment will be located. Will it be located indoors, housed within a building or outdoor? What type of environmental conditions exist at the location where the equipment will be installed? Is the equipment going to be installed within a hazardous area, in which case the instrument and electrical equipment need to have explosion protection. What type of utilities are available at site? For example, cooling water or not. And finally, the mechanical datasheet will indicate the purchaser's choices when the code gives the choice between different technologies, such as, for instance, the sealing of rotating machinery. As pressure vessels,
contrary to the other types of equipment, are fully designed by the engineering company, a drawing is prepared showing their dimensions. This drawing is not the final drawing of the vessel. The final drawing will be that issued by the manufacturer. Therefore, the drawing is called an engineering drawing. The mechanical design of the equipment, which consists of the determination of the thickness of all the parts of the vessel, according to the formulas of the pressure code, is sometimes done by the engineer or is left to the vendor. The mechanical design allows to determine the vessel weight as well as the foundation details and loads. Heat exchangers are subject to both thermal and mechanical design. The thermal design determines their surface and geometry to achieve the required heat exchange. The mechanical design of heat exchanger is similar to that of pressure vessels. The only difference is that the differential thermal expansion between the various parts of the vessel has to be taken into account due to the difference in temperature between the two fluids. For each type of equipment, a material requisition is issued by engineering to inquire for bids from vendors. For instance, there will be one material requisition for all the centrifugal pumps, one for all the carbon steel vessels, and one for all the shell and tube heat exchangers. The contents of the material requisition are the following. First of all, the list of material to be supplied, which is the list of the equipment tags and also any additional material such as spare parts. Second part is the list of applicable documents, which includes the applicable codes and standards as well as project specifications. Lastly, the material requisition lists all documents to be submitted by the vendor during the execution of the purchase order. Together with the list of documents, the schedule of submission is defined. Among the documents to be submitted by vendor are the interface documents. The interface documents show the interface information of the equipment with its environment with the plant in all disciplines. They include the equipment overall arrangement, which shows the equipment dimensions, as well as any requirement, for instance, for overhead clearance for maintenance. This will be used by the plant layout. It includes information on the process parameters of the equipment and utility requirements, which will be used by process. It includes information on the equipment weight, loads, and support details, which will be used to design the foundation. It includes the equipment electrical power supply requirements, which will be used by electrical to design the corresponding power supply. It also includes interface information for the control system and the instrumentation. For individual equipment, such as pressure vessels, the information shown on the mechanical datasheet and that included in the specified design and construction code are sufficient to fully define the technical requirements. No other document must be prepared. 
For equipment with an extended scope of supply, such as a turbo compressor set, and for package units, a specification needs to be written to precisely define the scope of supply and services. Before reviewing the contents of this specification, let's review what is a package. A package could mean a packaged equipment, meaning that the equipment comes with an extended environment. This is the case for a compressor set, for instance, which comes with its auxiliary systems, such as lube oil and fuel gas, as well as its own control and firefighting systems. A package could also mean a packaged unit. A packaged unit is a set of equipment performing a prescribed process function. The design and supply of all the equipment is the responsibility of the vendor that provides a process performance guarantee for the overall package. Packaged units are purchased for units requiring a dedicated know-how, such as gas treatment units. These packages may be supplied as modular units as shown here, where the equipment, pipes, instruments are mounted on a common skid. But packages could also be supplied shipped loose, where equipment are supplied individually for installation at site. Modular packages save erection time and are the norm for offshore facilities. Regardless of the type of package, whether it is a packaged equipment or a packaged unit, a specification needs to be issued in order to describe in details the scope of supply and services as well as all technical requirements. The package specification describes in details the scope of supply and services. It provides the list of all applicable specifications, the performance guarantees, the design requirements in all disciplines. Indeed, within a package, there are a number of disciplines such as pressure vessels, piping, structural, electrical, instrumentation and so on. So the requirements in each of these disciplines must be defined in the package specification. The package specification defines whether the package will have an independent control system or be controlled by the plant central control system. It also defines the pre-assembly level of the package, which strongly determines the extent of the site works. It finally describes the types of inspection and testing that is required. A dedicated material acquisition is issued for each package. Once material acquisitions have been issued, bids are received from vendors. The work of the equipment engineer is then to review the technical acceptability of the bids. This is done by preparing the technical bid tabulation. The technical bid tabulation is a table in which all technical requirements of the inquiry documents are indicated, along with what is offered by each vendor. Clarification meetings are held with suppliers to better understand the contents of their offer. Once the technical bid tabulation has been completed, 
the technical compliance of each vendor is stated by engineering to procurement. The purchase order is then placed, but this is not the end of the work of the equipment engineer. Indeed, the equipment engineer will follow up the work done by the vendor, including the design, and the equipment engineer will approve the design and the fabrication. The review of vendor documents by the equipment engineer is not a solitary review. Indeed, equipment interface concern several engineering disciplines. A column, for instance, has interfaces with virtually all engineering disciplines. First of all, with process, as process needs to check the internals that have been designed by the vendor. Then with plant layout, as plant layout is specifying the different platforms that are required for operator access. In turn, these platforms will require to be supported on the vessel. Hence, the vendor has to provide the brackets for the supports in the location specified by plant layout and structural steel disciplines. Piping will specify to the vendor the orientation of nozzles as well as the position of attachments to the vessel wall for pipe supports. Of course, there is also the interface with civil for the foundation and so on. This concludes this presentation on the work of the equipment discipline. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.